first chapter of this was not what I was expecting. I want to say mushroom horror, which probably isn't really a thing. I went to the library yesterday and I ended up picking up way more books than I was planning to. <laughs> so T. Kingfisher is an author who I have been interested in trying out for a really long time. <laughs> They're one of those authors who I never hear a bad word about. I've seen some people give some of their books underwhelming reviews, but I've never seen a one star rating, I don't think, for a T. Kingfisher book. And that has me intrigued. So in this reading vlog, I'm going to be reading three books by T. Kingfisher. The first is Briny and Roses, which I actually heard about quite recently because I saw Nat from Nerdy Nat Reads talking about it in a reading vlog. And it wasn't on my immediate radar, but the way that she was talking about it made me feel really interested. So that's the first book that I'm going to be picking up. The second book that I'm going to be reading is Nettle and Bone, which I've just realised I've left in the other room. Briny and Roses and Nettle and Bone are both fairy tale stories, which I think T. Kingfisher is most well known for, but she also writes horror. So the second book that I'm going to be picking up, sorry, not the second book, the third book and final book that I'm going to be reading is What Moves the Dead, which is a horror novella. This is actually a retelling of the fall of the House of Usher, and Briny and Roses is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Nell and Bone, as far as I know, is an original story, but yeah, those are the three books that I'm going to be reading in this vlog. This is one of the worst introductions that I've ever filmed for a reading vlog but I'm actually filming this intro having already read these books. I just didn't have time <laughs> to film one when I started this vlog because I was getting over a sickness bug. So if my voice sounds a little bit gravelly in the first update, then that is why. <laughs> I'm going to stop rambling and let's get into the vlog. So I am approaching the halfway point of Briony and Roses by T. Kingfisher and I wanted to share some initial thoughts and feelings. This is quite a short book. I think the audiobook is only around six hours long so there's a good chance that I'm going to finish it tomorrow and I wanted to share some thoughts before I finish it. Don't have many thoughts at the moment is the problem. I think I'm liking it but I can't work out if I'm liking it because of the writing and the characters or because it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling and I like the story of Beauty and the Beast. This is an interesting twist on that like there's a few differences that I'm really enjoying. We're basically following this main character Bryony who is out in the woods one day when she gets lost and she stumbles across this enchanted manor house where this beast lives and he turns to her and says you're allowed to go home for a week and say goodbye to your sisters but then you've got to come back and you've got to live here with me for the rest of your life. It really drops you right into the story which took me a while to adjust to but now I am liking it. I think that the beast and Bryony have good banter and I love the house. The house is my favourite character so far because it feels like a character in itself. The only thing I'm not loving too much is the audiobook narration and I always feel really bad when I criticise an audiobook narration but I looked up on Google, I double checked, the narrator is putting on a fake British accent and I can tell and it's really taking me out of the story because every so often there'll be a word which will be pronounced in a different way and yeah it's just taken me a while to get used to but it's a bit like every time I rewatch Buffy the Vampire Slayer and I get to the part where Spike and Drusilla are introduced and it always annoys me because their accents just aren't great but then I get used to it and Spike is one of my favourite characters in Buffy. Sorry if you can hear my chair speaking by the way but I've already filmed this update once and I'm refilming it because it didn't film properly so yeah that's my halfway uh, update. I am hoping to finish this tomorrow and then I will update you with my final thoughts. So unfortunately I did not end up finishing Bryony and Roses yesterday. I have less than an hour left of the audiobook so I'll probably finish it either on my lunch break or at some point over the weekend. I might go to the gym actually tonight so I can listen to some more then. But anyway I am enjoying this so far. I think that if you like a book with a lot of mystery then I would recommend this. Obviously I already know the original story but it's been really fun trying to see how this links into that because it's not a direct retelling. We've mostly spent most of the book following Bryony as she's at this house and she's doing a lot of gardening and she's also getting to know the beast. I think if I wasn't that invested in the characters 
just then I might find this a little bit dull, but I like the characters. I think they have good chemistry together. It's made me realize that I don't read many fairy tales that feel like this. Most of the fairy tale retellings that I've read or books that have a fairy tale like feeling, most of them have a more gothic atmosphere or a dark atmosphere. Whereas this is more upbeat and witty and it feels different to what I'm used to. So I'm enjoying that experience as well. I am really interested to see how this ends because obviously I have theories based on the original story, but I don't know if that's gonna be what's gonna actually happen. Whatever happens, it has been really fun seeing how elements from the original story have been incorporated into this story. And I'm definitely more excited to read more books by T. Kingfisher. I just got home from town. I met up with my sister earlier and we took my niece and nephew to the board game cafe and the arcade, which was really fun. <laughs> what was really weird as well is I was listening to my audiobook as I was walking to the train station and I literally finished my audiobook 10 seconds before I met up with them. That was really freaky. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have now finished Briony and Roses and I think I'm going to give this a four stars. I did really enjoy it and I would recommend it if you're looking for a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I don't know how much else I have to say about it really. I liked the ending. I liked the characters. It was a little bit darker as well towards the end, which I wasn't expecting. It's definitely made me more intrigued about reading more books by T. Kingfisher. I think the next book I'm going to pick up is Nettle and Bone. And it's going to be really interesting to read this physically and see how I feel about it in comparison to listening to the audiobook because I feel like I might enjoy T. Kingfisher's writing even more when reading it physically. So I'm not going to lie to you. It's been around a week since I last caught up with you, but I have now made a start on Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. I'm around 50 pages into this. So I'm on page 55, so not too far in. And <laughs> I am a little bit confused. I'm enjoying it. I should start by saying that. But the first chapter of this was not what I was expecting. <laughs> We're basically introduced to this main character, Mara. And in the first chapter, she's in this pit of bones and she's building a dog out of these bones. But you don't know why. I mean, you soon find out why. This land that she's in is full of cannibals and it just felt very, very random. But then it kind Kind of takes you back and it shows you how Mara ended up in the situation and essentially she wants to kill her sister's husband who is abusive and he's also a prince so in order to do that she gets in touch with I think it's a witch I haven't quite got to that part yet but she has to complete these tasks in order to kill this prince it's a quest story i should have probably opened by saying that mara is on this quest and yeah it's very unusual i don't think i've ever read a book that's given me this kind of feeling not even briony and roses if you want to give a content warning at this point for traumatic childbirth related stuff it again was not what i was expecting but i like Mara as a character. I like how she's going on this quest because she wants to save her sister and no one else will. It has that medieval type setting where women aren't seen as anything other than mothers and it's interesting. I feel like I need to read some more to get into it but now that we're actually learning about Mara's backstory and we're seeing the politics within this world, I'm liking it. It just threw me a little bit in the beginning because it wasn't at all what I expected but yeah Mara is basically from this one kingdom and then there's a kingdom to the north and a kingdom to the south and her sister is married to the prince from the northern kingdom and there's political reasons for why they have to have 
an alliance and yeah I'm finding all of that quite interesting because it's a political situation that Mara is having to navigate but yeah I think there's potential for me to really like this I just need to read a little bit more and now that I'm used to the tone and the writing style I think I will enjoy it a lot more it does have that fairy tale like feeling but it's not a direct retelling like Bryony and Roses I don't think so anyway I'm pretty sure this is an original story but um yeah that's all I have to say <laughs> at this point I am I'm gonna hopefully read some more over the weekend and my plan is actually to try and finish it this weekend but we'll see if that's actually possible I will try and check in with you before I finish it maybe once I'm at the halfway point but it's only around 324 pages and when I'm reading it I am reading it quite quickly it's just I'm struggling to find the motivation to pick it up right now I went to the library yesterday and I ended up picking up way more books than I was planning to <laughs> I went in looking for for T. Kingfisher books and I found What Moves the Dead which I think I am going to try and read in this vlog and I also found Thornhedge which is a really tiny little novella but this really appealed to me. It says there's a princess trapped in a tower. This isn't her story and I thought that sounded really cool. It's some kind of Rapunzel retelling I'm assuming. So maybe I'll pick up both of these in this vlog. It depends on how much time I have this week and then and I also found In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune, which I've wanted to read since it came out last year. And I also spotted A Love Song for Ricky Wilde by Tia Williams, which came out, I think, in February. I know it's a 2024 release and I loved Seven Days in June by this author. So yeah, when I saw this in the library, I knew I couldn't leave it behind. So now that I'm over halfway through Nettle and Bone, I feel like I can more confidently say that I am enjoying it. I I think what I struggled with in the beginning is this is trying to be both lighthearted, cozy and fun, but also it has some deeper and darker themes and more serious topics. Yeah, I think I struggled to grasp at the tone of this initially because it does have that lighthearted fairy tale like feeling. But there was a lot of trauma as well in the beginning. So now that I'm used to it, I am enjoying it a lot more. I think there's a romance developing and I don't feel that invested in it. I think at the moment this is feeling like it's going to be a solid four stars. I have some issues with it, but generally I like the characters and I I'm enjoying following, what's her name? Mara. <laughs> I'm enjoying following Mara as she's going on this quest and she's acquiring new friends along the way. It's got found family vibes and that does, you know, it's, it's something that I enjoy reading. The world isn't anything special. It feels like we've been dropped into this world that has a lot of fairy tale creatures and there's kings and princes and princesses and witches and fairy godmothers. It just feels like your pretty standard fairy tale world, but honestly, I wasn't expecting there to be loads of world building considering this is a standalone and it's only 320 something pages. I'm currently on page 188 so I have nearly 150 pages to go. I reckon I can finish this tonight though. The middle of this has mostly been a lot of journeying but I feel like we're getting to the action now. I'm really struggling to get my words out today so apologies if this update is a little bit all over the place but I have now finished Nettle and Bone. I finished this at last night and I'm gonna give it a solid four stars. I think I enjoyed this slightly more than Bryony and Roses. I would recommend them both if you're looking for a fairy tale story. The main difference is the main character in Bryony and Roses is 17 I think. She's definitely in her late teens. There was nothing about it that made me think it was YA but there was also nothing about it that made me think okay this is firmly adult. It's one of those books that's kind of ageless I guess whereas Nettle and Bone I found was more firmly at all. Would recommend this if you're looking for more mature characters. The main character is 30, I think. There's also a few like other older characters, but yeah, all that to say, I did really enjoy this. I thought the ending was really clever and I liked how it all wrapped up. The only thing I wasn't that fussed about was the romance, but that wasn't actually the main focus of the plot. It was just kind of a little side thought. So yeah, four stars for this. And I think now, the next book I'm going to pick up 
is What Moves the Dead because I'm not really in the mood for another fairy tale. Um, this is horror as far as I know. I think it's, I want to say mushroom horror, which probably isn't really a thing, but I've heard this recommended for if you like Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I've heard it recommended if you enjoyed that. It's a retelling of The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe, which I've never read. I've never actually read anything by Edgar Allan Poe, but I did watch the TV show <laughs> last year. So yeah, I'm kind of familiar with the concept and I'm excited to try something a little bit different from T. Kingfisher. I was going to try and finish this in one sitting last night, but I got a bit tired. So I'm going to finish it today. Instead, I am 84 pages in, so just over halfway or just under halfway. <laughs> I'm enjoying it so far. It's a very different vibe to the other books that I've read so far by T. Kingfisher, but I am getting to the point where it's starting to get a bit creepy because in case I didn't say this is a horror, <laughs> we're following this main character called Alex and they get a letter from their friend Madeline saying that Madeline is basically ill, like seriously ill. Her twin brother thinks that she might be dying. So our main character arrives at their grand manor where they live and yeah they're kind of exploring the house and the grounds and trying to work out what's going on because something's not right. <laughs> Madeline looks like she's near death and the same could be said about Roderick as well. He looks like he's aged several decades. That's basically what the book is about. It's only short. It's like I said around 175 <laughs> pages so I went into this not expecting it to have much plot. It has mostly just been creepy and confusing stuff happening. There's lots of mushrooms around this estate and something's wrong with the rabbits as well. I don't really have any predictions. <laughs> I don't know what direction this is going to go in, which is exciting. I think my star rating is really going to depend on the ending. The first half wasn't as creepy as I wanted it to be, but I think that's mostly because it was building up to whatever's going to happen <laughs> in the second half. I think I've reached the point now where things are going to become more tense and we're going to get into the real horror of the story, which I'm excited for. Also, the term I was looking for yesterday was cosmic horror, not mushroom horror. <laughs> I was editing that vlog clip yesterday evening and my partner overheard and laughed at me <laughs> quite a lot. But yeah, this is cosmic horror. That was the term that I was looking for. I feel like mushroom horror should be a thing though. <laughs> Very glad that I picked this up though, because so far I am enjoying it. And I feel like if I enjoy this, then that means that I can be excited to read anything by T. Kingfisher because I feel like they do write two main types of genres. They write whimsical fairy tales and horror. I feel like there's some stuff I might be missing out on because I haven't read the original story, but maybe I'll do that after I finish this. So I have now finished What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher and I really enjoyed this. I think out of all the books that I've read for this vlog, I would say that this is the best written. It was the perfect length and the pacing was, again, pretty perfect. Like there was never a point where I felt bored, but I got to the end and I thought, yeah, that's a satisfying ending. I don't feel like this could have gone on any longer. I'm a little confused why there's a sequel because I don't feel like this really needs a sequel. So I might just leave this as a standalone. If you're interested in this book, then do know that this does have body horror, which I think some people don't enjoy. It's something that I wouldn't go and say that I enjoy it, <laughs> but it's a type of horror that does really work for me. So I really appreciated that. And I also loved the setting. I love a crumbling manor house where creepy things are happening and it just feels very dark and gothic. I will say I'm gonna give this four stars and not five stars which is the same rating <laughs> that I've given all the books that I've read so far by T. Kingfisher but the reason this didn't quite give me that five star feeling is because I don't think it went as far as it could have. Some people might enjoy that but I just wanted a little bit more so uh, yeah 
four stars and that does bring me to the end of this reading vlog. I have really enjoyed all of the books that I've read by T. Kingfisher for this vlog. I've obviously read three. I will try and pick up Thornhedge later this month. I realised as well, I said that Thornhedge is a Rapunzel retelling. It's not. I think it's a Sleeping Beauty retelling or something like that. But because I have got it out of the library, I am going to attempt to read it at some point later this month before I have to take it back. It's only like a hundred and something pages, so that should be doable. <laughs> but yeah, that is the end of this reading vlog. I would recommend all three of the books that I've read in this reading vlog. Even though I didn't give any of them the full five stars, I would recommend them to different people. I think if you're looking for a fairy tale retelling, then Beauty and the Beast, not Beauty and the Beast, <laughs> Bryony and Roses was a great Beauty and the Beast retelling. Nettle and Bone I think is a great option if you're looking for a standalone fantasy that has a fairy tale like feeling but it's not like a direct retelling of anything and then what moves the dead I would recommend as a really intriguing short horror novella I don't think I have anything else that I need to say in this reading vlog so thank you for watching if you made it this far let me know in the comments have you read any of T Kingfisher's books and are there any others that you'd recommend because I feel like these are the most popular that I hear talked about all the time time but I'd also really like to try their series which I think is called uh, Clockwork Boys or something like that. They also have a Snow Queen retelling which I really want to try as well but I think I'm going to wait for the winter to read that because it feels like more of a wintry book but yeah I'm going to stop rambling. Thanks for watching, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me but otherwise I will see you next time. Bye!